Hi, Sean from Ashland with another Vectorworks tutorial. This time, uh, it's for a specific question from a subscriber. At the end of the last tutorial, I put out the word that I'd be happy to do specific tutorials answering your questions. So uh, please feel free to send me an email or a, uh, a comment if you'd like to see uh, a specific question answered. The question in this case here for my first uh, question request, tutorial request, is actually a pretty simple answer. How do you scale textures on a wall object? So I'm going to answer that question and at the same time I'm going to go in into a little greater detail about how textures are applied to wall objects because it's a little different. On the screen right now I have two shapes that are basically identical but they were created in two different ways. So this first shape here is an extrusion from uh, the, um, the sort of a perimeter created from the double polyline tool here, the polygon tool. So I just clicked on these four points, extruded it to eight feet, and I have this shape. This one over here, though, used the wall tool in the building shell tool sets, where again, same basic idea. I kind of clicked the four corners, the eight foot height of it was a default setting of the tool. Uh, so created in very similar ways, but they're going to take the textures very differently. And there's pros and cons to both. So I have my extrusion selected, my regular object. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this brick texture and hit apply. Now that's covered the entire surface of the object with this brick texture, which is kind of cool. Many times you're, you're creating an object and you want that object to be a solid texture on all sides and inside and out. Uh, and that's easy to do with just a regular extruded shape. However, there are times that you're going to want various sides of a shape to be different. And you can do that with the wall tool. Very commonly, you would want an exterior cladding on one side of your wall and an interior wall treatment on the other side. Bricks, for example, and maybe paint on the inside, like I'm going to show you here in a second. Um, walls are very different in the way the textures are applied. And again, you might, the first couple times you, you apply some textures, you might have to poke around a little bit to see what's happening. Uh, it might, you know, not be exactly the same as what I'm going to show you here. So I've got, first of all, a, a portion of the wall selected. Even though I created this all at the same time, just clicked on the four points, closed the shape. By doing that, I created four separate wall pieces, each one of which can be textured independently of each other. So this side can have a different texture than this side over here. Uh, they can have different scales of texture, the same texture with two different scales. They're independently controllable on all six sides. Actually, seven sides, because you can even fill in the opening, you know, the reveal of a hole here. If you put an archway or a window or something, you could paint the reveal, the inside of that opening, its own uh, color. So you've got seven different parts that you can control. I'm going to do the same thing though with this wall selected. I'm going to go here, go over here and grab this brick and I'm going to right click and hit apply again. Now in this case it's applied uh, very similarly to what it did over here and it may not do, if I do a different wall here that I haven't set up the same way, if I grab this one, if I apply it over here, uh, yeah, see it's only put the texture at the top of it. I'll show you why it's doing that here in a second. Uh, but in this case I have the, this part of the wall set up so that the uh, part here overall has that brick running texture. So all the sides, just like we did over here uh, with the um, the extruded shape here, even the bottom, all of this stuff here has the, the brick texture, even on the end caps that we can't see because they're hidden by the other walls. So that's handy to have. Uh, and I'm in, by the way, in the render tab of the object info render. This is where a lot of this control comes from. So I might be happy with the bricks on the outside of my wall, but if I click over here to the inside of my wall, I may not be real happy that I've got bricks inside. I may want my sponge Tus Tuscan paint treatment. So how I do that is to go over here to the part on, in the object info tab here and see where it says overall right now. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on, I believe it's left. Grab the left side of that. We'll find out real quick if I'm right or not. And I'm going to select my paint treatment. And there it is. I got it right. Okay. So the left side of my wall is the inside and I've applied just that paint treatment to just the inside of it. That hasn't done anything to the bricks on the outside. See that? Oops, I switched to carpet somehow. I've got bricks and now carpet on the wall. That's kind of fun. Uh, let's go back to the paint treatment. And I can even do that on other sides of it. Where'd my paint go? There it is. So for example, if I want the top of my wall to have just this black fill, like it's a section cut, I can go over here back to parts and grab top. See, it's getting top from overall right now, and my overall is the bricks, right? So I'm going to grab top and make that, instead of bricks, I'm going to click right here and find my black right there, and there we go. It has applied that 
black texture just to the top edges of my wall. So I've got paint on one side, uh, black on the on the uh, edges, and then I've got bricks on the outside. Now to answer the question here about how do you rescale these bricks, there's a couple of different ways to do that. One of the ways, if you want the bricks to be scaled overall throughout your entire document to be to be bigger, the fastest way to do that everywhere is just to go back to the original texture, right click and edit the texture, and then you'll see right here this eight inches is saying this little tileable piece of wallpaper is eight inches. So if I wanted to make that much bigger bricks, I could come in here and say 24 inches and then see how it made it larger in the preview. Now if I say OK, it's made it the bricks bigger everywhere. See how it even changed the texture over here, made the bricks bigger there. So if you want the bricks everywhere to be universally bigger, uh, you can do it that way. But if you want to leave these bricks alone and only affect these bricks, there's other ways to do that. So with that wall still selected, still on the render tab, you've got, oh actually you know what I need to do is select the part of the wall that has the um, has the bricks on it. So let me go back to my uh, well, actually, I'll just go to overall there because that's got the bricks on it. Now you can see I've got this scale slider right now. So I can grab this little slider and just move that up and down. That's changing the scale of the bricks just on this wall. See how it left them alone in the other places, even on over here on this other piece of the same wall, this other segment of the wall, it left those bricks alone. It's only affected it right there. So if I made my bricks bigger there, you can flip them, you can rotate them, you can offset them. For example, if I didn't want that little little portion of a brick showing, I wanted the very top of it to be a uh, the mortar, I could mess with the, uh, the vertical offset right here, change that number until I had mortar at the very top of my wall instead of a little portion of a brick. That's uh, another terrific way to do that. The other way to do that is to mess with the attribute mapping tool here. So if I grab the attribute mapping tool, it's going to demand that I map it in either plane, sphere, or cylinder. In this case, plane makes the most obvious sense. And you can see there's just a little portion of my wall. This is the bricks that are um, one tile of my bricks down over here. So I can move that around on the wall if I want, and I can also grab one of these corner bits and scale that way. So if I want to make gigantic bricks there, when I exit this mode here, just go back to the tool there, you can see I've rescaled the bricks that way as well. So all three of those methods can change the scale of your bricks on your wall. I want to show you one other thing though before we're done, and that is the fact that if you notice, let me grab the wall here again that I just deleted, um, the, it says overall class texture. And that might be when you first create a wall, it's probably by default, it's going to say class texture. What that means is you can set up a class, as I have done here uh, in the classes tab, so that when you create a wall, it automatically paints it for you with however you set it up. So I'm going to go over and click on new wall and edit it so you can see what I did. I just put some shingles on the left side of the wall, black at the top and bottom, basically like I have in my uh, other example, and I put some aluminum on the right side. And this box here, use textures at creation, means that, let me just close those up, when I go back and grab the, the wall tool in my tool sets, there it is, my wall tool, and start dragging a wall, I'm going to click a little corner here, now automatically, oh, I didn't didn't switch to that class. Hey, here we go. Go back to the new wall and do that again. With that class selected, I've got shingles on one side and aluminum on the other side and all the edges have black on them. So that's pretty cool so that you can keep on doing that. If I do another wall over here, same thing. This side has got uh, shingles on it, spin around here. I've got aluminum on one side, black on all the edges. So if you're doing a whole bunch of walls and they all want to be painted the same way, set up a class like that. And then as you start dragging walls around, they're always going to be painted correctly. And then if you want to come in and change one wall or, or, or mess with its scale or rotation in one spot, it's a lot easier to just find the one area that you want instead of having to select them all. Of course, there's nothing that stops you from selecting multiple walls and doing it as well. You know, you can come along and grab all these walls and then I can mess with all of their textures at the same time even if they are not already textured. But those are all different ways to apply textures to walls that give you a lot more control than if you're just painting a regular uh, polygon object. So hopefully that answered the question about scaling the textures on, on the walls and it also gave you a little bit more insight on the power of individually painting various planes on a wall object.